Rome and Egypt have had their collision in the past. In fact, it was Rome that brought the great Egyptian empire to its knees. It is not surprising, however, that there are a lot of Egyptian secrets hidden beneath the Vatican City. Join us in today's video as we take a close look at these secrets and what it pertains to the human race. Let's begin! Imagine stepping into a colossal palace transformed into a treasure trove. Founded in 1506, the Vatican museums aren't just galleries, they're a labyrinth wonderland showcasing artistic masterpieces beyond compare. Among their 70,000 priceless artifacts, 20,000 stand proudly on display, while countless secrets whisper from within. One particularly captivating corner is the Gregorian Egyptian Museum. Nestled within the Belvedere Palace, its nine rooms unfold like a captivating story. Once the private haven of Pope Pius IV, this 16th century space now houses a breathtaking collection brought to life by Pope Gregory XVI, a man enthralled by the mysteries of ancient Egypt. The first decipherment of hieroglyphics sparked his enthusiasm, driving him to gather Egyptianized artifacts from across the Papal States and private collections, forming the heart of this remarkable museum. How exactly did this museum come about? The expert behind the museum's formation was Barbonite father Giuseppe Ungarelli. Ungarelli, who was its first curator, was himself an eminent Egyptologist and disciple of Ippolito Rossellini, Champollion's closest Italian colleague and the father of Egyptology in Italy. Here are some shocking Egyptian secrets on display in the Vatican Museum. Anubis, Roman style. Let's meet Anubis, the jackal-headed guardian of the afterlife whose influence in a sort of way transcended millennia and geographical borders. This captivating statue, crafted from gleaming Parian marble sometime in the 1st or 2nd century CE, showcases his enduring popularity even during the Roman times. Gone are the traditional Egyptian robes, replaced by a flowing Roman toga, a testament to the cultural fusion that marked the era. But beneath the Roman garb, Anubis retains his core essence. The solar disk and crescent moon adorning his brow echo his connection to the celestial realm, while the Egyptian sistrum rattle in his right hand and the Roman caduceus of Hermes in his left symbolize his dual role as both protector of the dead and guider of the souls. This fascinating statue's journey is as remarkable as its appearance. Unearthed at the Pamphili Villa in Anzio, it found its way into the hands of Pope Benedict XIV in 1749. Finally, in 1839, it found its permanent home within the Vatican Museum's Gregorian Egyptian Museum, where it continues to captivate visitors with its unique blend of Egyptian mystique and Roman artistry. Two steles for the god Ta. The god Ta is very fascinating to look at. The captivating Egyptian god who wore a blue cap like a skilled artisan. He was the heart and soul of Memphis, a bustling capital, and a revered creator deity who, it was believed, spoke the universe into existence. Looking at the two dedication steles, one unearthed in Memphis itself, the other found fittingly in the workman's village of Deir in Medina. They stand as testaments to the artistry inspired by Ta and the enduring devotion he commanded. As the god of Memphis, Ta held a special place in the hearts of its inhabitants. Kings and queens, commoners alike, sought his blessings for Mat, the cosmic order of harmony and balance. They craved his favor for life, health, and prosperity, knowing his power to shape their destinies. Ta stands tall, his blue cap marking him as the divine craftsman. He clutches his war scepter, a symbol of his potent authority, within the embrace of his shrine, the White Walls of Memphis. This image speaks volumes about Ta's deep connection to the city, his very essence woven into its fabric. Ta's legacy transcends mere stone monuments. He remains an enduring symbol of creativity, a reminder of the power of thought and word to shape reality. Stel of Hatshepsut and Thutmose III, early 18th dynasty. 
Among the treasures housed within the Vatican museums lies a seemingly unassuming object, a sandstone stele depicting the powerful Pharaoh Hatshepsut and her younger co-ruler Tutmos III. While not the most aesthetically striking artifact, this stele holds immense historical significance. Carved sometime during their early co-regency, roughly 1479 to 1473 BC, it offers a rare glimpse into their shared reign and Hatshepsut's remarkable rise to power. The stele portrays Hatshepsut, adorned in a distinctive blue crown of Lower Egypt, presenting offerings of incense to the mighty god Amun. Standing beside her is the youthful Tutmos III, his head adorned with the right crown of Upper Egypt. This intriguing juxtaposition hints at the delicate power dynamics during their co-regency. Initially, Hatshepsut ruled as king, adopting male attire and iconography to solidify her claim. Tutmos III, though officially co-ruler, likely held limited power during this period. Originally erected in Western Thebes to commemorate restoration works at the Karnak Temple Complex, the stele's journey to Rome remains shrouded in some mystery. Records indicate its arrival in the Vatican Museums in 1819, but the precise details of its acquisition are unclear. Theories range from purchase on the antiquities market to diplomatic gifts exchanged between the Holy Sec and Egyptian officials. 22nd Dynasty Coffin of Jedmut, 1945-1909 BCE Among these treasures contained in the Vatican Museum is Jedmut. Her mummy and coffin, crafted in the 22nd Dynasty's signature yellow style, stands as testaments to a fascinating era in Egyptian history. With the decline of elaborate tombs due to economic pressures, the art of the coffin flourished. A bit different from their previous craft, the skilled artisans of Deir el Medina poured their talents into creating these beautifully adorned vessels for the afterlife. Jedmut's coffin is a symphony of stunning iconography and protective spells, each stroke serving as a guardian on her journey to eternal peace. The vivid colors on the coffin whisper of celestial realms, while hieroglyphic hymns offer guidance and comfort. This masterpiece of funerary art encapsulates the profound belief in the afterlife that permeated ancient Egyptian culture. Statue of Osiris Antinous, early 2nd CE from Tivoli. This captivating marble statue, frozen in time for nearly two millennia, depicts Antinous, a young man whose beauty captivated the heart of Roman Emperor Hadrian and whose tragic fate would inspire an unparalleled outpouring of love and grief. Antinous, with his delicate features and graceful bearing, served as Hadrian's trusted companion and likely lover. When he tragically drowned in the Nile in 130 AD, Hadrian was shattered. His grief knew no bounds, leading him to deify Antinous and elevate him to the status of a god. Driven by his immense love, Hadrian embarked on a remarkable quest to immortalize Antinous. He commissioned countless statues and busts, such as this one portraying his beloved in various guises. He even merged Antinous with Osiris, the Egyptian god of the afterlife, creating a syncretic deity to ensure his companion's eternal life. Hadrian's devotion extended beyond statues and myths. He founded a city in Egypt, aptly named Antonopolis, as a living monument to his lost love. He even attempted to name a constellation after him, though this endeavor proved less successful. This particular statue exemplifies the fusion of Roman and Egyptian influences. While the striding left leg echoes age-old Egyptian iconography, the features, attire, and relaxed sloped back pose are distinctively Roman. The result is a masterpiece that celebrates both Antinous's undeniable beauty and the artistic currents of the era. Statue of Queen Tai, usurped by Ramses III for his mother Tuya. Nestled within the Vatican's museums lies another captivating treasure a majestic granite statue that whispers tales of ancient Egypt's queens and pharaohs. 
This grand figure, once bathed in the Nile sun, originally stood as a testament to the beauty and power of Queen Tai, wife of Pharaoh Amenhotep III. Carved from a single block of black granite, the statue exudes an undeniable aura of power and grace. Its sheer size, dwarfing many viewers, evokes the respect and reverence held for Queen Tai during her reign. Her delicately sculpted features, adorned with a traditional wig and elaborate jewelry, reveal the artistic mastery of the 18th dynasty. But the statue's tale is not one of singular devotion. In the 19th century, Pharaoh Ramses II, driven by familial ties or perhaps political motives, usurped the statue. He transported it to his own mortuary temple, the Ramseum, and rededicated it to his mother, Queen Tuya. This act, while unusual, offers a glimpse into the complexity of power and legacy within ancient Egyptian dynasties. A closer look reveals another fascinating detail, a smaller figure etched onto the left side of the statue's pillar. This is Princess Henetmeyer, Ramsay II's sister, depicted offering a lotus flower. Her inclusion here serves as a strong reminder of the familial bonds that intertwined even amidst shifting political landscapes. The statue's journey continued beyond the sands of Egypt. It found its way to Rome, adorning the opulent Gardens of Seleucid during the reign of Emperor Caligula. Centuries later, it was unearthed in the Vigna Verospi Gardens and eventually found its permanent home in the Vatican Museums in 1839. These are just a few of the artifacts from Egypt in the Vatican Museum. Would you like to visit to explore more on these? Do let us know in the comment section below and thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Planet of Amazement for more exciting content. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.